<clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. We're, this is going to be a long vlog. This is going to be a long, action-packed, really, really fun vlog. We have some shout-outs to do, some first impressions. We do have some activism, as well as beer shopping with Grim Green. Went over to the BevMo and picked up some uh, some delicious beer, which we're going to talk about uh, in a minute. Um, this weekend is Vapor Slam in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which means that this video is getting uploaded on Thursday, and I'll be flying out Thursday morning. So Thursday through the whole weekend, I'm not gonna have any access to YouTube comments, emails, PMs, or anything like that. So if I don't reply to your comments, uh, you know, right away, or it takes a little bit to get back at the emails, just uh, bear with me. I'm gonna be out of town, and I'm only gonna have my phone. I'm not gonna have any sort of laptop. I'm not gonna be working. I'm just gonna be enjoying myself with the meat, hanging out with my dear good friends. So with that said, First thing I want to do is give a real quick shout out to Chelsea. That's right, uh, Society of Vape. She has a team. She has Team SOV that they uh, they compete in cloud comps down here in Southern California at the various vape meets, this, that, and the other. And she made me an uh, like an honorary member. What? That is cool. Team SOV. Chelsea's just a. Uh, She's so fucking cool. She's one of my favorite people of all time. We just went to the SoCal Vape Expo this last weekend and. Had an unbelievable time. Great meet. Uh, met so many super cool people. Hung out with so many super cool people. And uh, Chelsea was always always made sure that I had a cold beer uh, in my hand. She would just show up and be like, with with like four beers, and be like, "Hey, this one of these is for you." I'm like, Chelsea, that I mean that is so fucking cool. Um, just a super cool person. So I wanted to give her a quick shout out. But we do have uh, before I get to this beer and before we get to beer shopping, I do want to do a quick quick couple advocacy things. So Ron, Ron emailed me uh, the Pennsylvania call to action uh, to oppose the governor's unjustifiable 40% wholesale tax on vapor products and smokeless tobacco. Uh, governor Tom Wolf has proposed the budget for 2016 that would enact a 40% wholesale tax on both vapor products and smokeless tobacco. This is certainly not the first time that Pennsylvania has sought to tax smokeless tobacco products, and thanks to the tireless efforts of Bill Godshall of Smoke Free Pennsylvania, it has been defeated every time. This year, Governor Wolf is adding e-cigs into the mix uh, and hopes to raise 80 plus billion dollars, 80 plus million dollars of tax revenue. And I'll post a link in the description uh, to the CASA call to action for this particular uh, Pennsylvania 40% wholesale tax. We discussed wholesale taxes before, uh, and uh, you know, as far as point A, point B, government comes in, wholesale tax, bad for you, bad for the consumer, bad for the vendors, quite honestly. Um, so thank you, Ron, for sending that my way, and I'll post a link in the description to the CASA.org website. Justin, as well, sent me a uh, uh, something, what did Justin send me? Justin sent me this article on uh, the State Journal Register, sjr.com, and I'll post a link, obviously, to this article, um, but it's basically uh, uh, an uh, indoor-outdoor use uh, e-cig ban. Um, it says that Representative Kathleen Willis has filed Bill 2404 in February, which would have pro prohibited indoor use of e-cigarettes or vaping, similar to other forms of tobacco. Um, and here's the thing, people get, um, people get all in a huff about like, well, of course we shouldn't be vaping indoors. An indoor vaping ban isn't wrong. And you're right, we shouldn't be walking down an aisle in BevMo or walking down the aisle in Target or Trader Joe's and blowing giant clouds of vapor. I personally can go into a Starbucks, spend 15 minutes talking to the people, order my drink, leave. I don't have to vape in those 15 minutes. You don't have to vape indoors. The problem is vape shops. There are vape shops that this would apply to. You wouldn't be able to vape inside of a vape shop. Additionally, we should not not be treating vaping like tobacco products. That's the real, I mean, that's the real issue with these indoor vape bans is it's not like, oh, we should, you know, we should be allowed to vape anywhere we want. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is don't treat vaping like tobacco products because there's no tobacco in it. 
your your information is incorrect there is actually no tobacco in uh, in vapor products so I'm gonna post a link in the description there to uh, to this news article as well so thank you thank you Justin for sending that my way uh, I have two more activism things uh, so this fella named uh, fella named Derek actually sent me the actual bill um, and I was reading through it and it's it's crazy it's in Alabama and the bill is um, the synopsis of it is under the existing law there is no tobacco tax on consumable vapor products that's what they state these products are taxed at the general sales tax rate which means we are paying a tax on them in Alabama and in other certain states I believe every state except for freaking Oregon right uh, this bill would tax consumable vapor products and provide the stamping for such. I don't even know what that. Uh, I don't even know what that means. And they go very in depth as to what a vapor product is. It's anything. They have battery listed on here. Battery in its own category. Battery. They will be taxing batteries as vapor products. They're saying that a battery is tobacco. They're saying that a battery is tobacco in Alabama. They're saying that a battery, just let that sink in for a second. They're saying a battery is tobacco. Mechanical heating element or electronic circuit, regardless of shape or size. That's it, that covers all your mods, Sigalikes, Egos, uh, whatever, dual, parallel, 18650 boxes. This covers that. Those boxes, with or without batteries, those are tobacco now. Your plexiglass box, your ABS box, your wooden box without batteries, that is a tobacco product, and that will be taxed as such in Alabama unless we can stop this. I'm going to post a link uh, in the description to the House bill, and obviously, as always, I will post a link in the description to the CASA calls to action. Thank you, uh, thank you so much, Derek, for sending that my way. More importantly, today, CASA posted on their Instagram account. Um, we're resubmitting. We're doing submissions to the FDA again. I'm getting texted. We're doing submissions to the... Okay. We're doing submissions again to... This is a really crucial part. <laughs> we're doing submissions again to the FDA. They're having their first workshop regarding e-cigarettes, and they want our feedback. This is a huge, huge opportunity. So on December 14th, December 2014, the FDA held the first in a series of workshops in which experts are involved to inform them about the physical characteristics of e-cigarettes. It should be no surprise that the people who were granted time to speak were largely non-experts and that consumer representatives were closed out of this meeting. This is your opportunity to help remedy that. Uh, if you watch the workshop, you know what they were talking about. If you did not, all you need to know is the FDA sought the opinion of people who presented information about the level you might see in a magazine article on e-cigarettes. Please note that the, the comments we're asking you to submit for the first workshop uh, December 10th and 11th, 12th, 2014. The second FDA workshop last week was much of the same. The speakers are somewhat more expert, but could still have learned a lot from a consumer representative, and yet our application to include CASA's experts on the program were refused. We will have an opportunity to comment on that meeting later. I'm going to post a link in the description. This, this could be the most important one state and local governments incredibly important this is on a national level this is us submitting comments to the fda uh so that they have uh experts uh at their e-cigarette workshop they are they are using these workshops to decide basically decide the future of vaping and i posted the i posted the link it's in the profile of my instagram profile it's on my instagram uh, I am going to post it in the link, uh, links below in the description to this video. But yes, absolutely, this is incredibly, incredibly crucial. This is the FDA, uh, the FDA. I mean, they are, like I said, essentially deciding the future of e-cigarettes, and we can give them some feedback on that. So thank you so much, CASA, obviously, uh, for going above and beyond and posting things like this. And I'll post links in the description to where you can check it out. But I do... I do do want to talk about beer right now. So I went to the BevMo. I picked up some beer. You 
are about to go with me because uh, I think it's time for beer shopping with Grim. All right. Well, hello, vlog viewers. We are, uh, I've been promising you for a while, we're going to go beer shopping today. I am currently on the freeway here in uh, beautiful, sunny uh, Southern California. And uh, we're going to head up to the BevMo. Shoot, is that too close? Is that too far away? I'm not sure. We're going to head up to the BevMo. And uh, yeah, we're going to go beer shopping. I'm going to have to use my beer budget hands. I'm looking to get uh, maybe three bottles uh, of beer today. Then I got to get them home and into the fridge so that I can uh, actually vlog later. This is pre-vlog, son. So yeah, good times. Safety first, eyes on the road. I'm gonna put the GoPro down. See you at BevMo. Oh, it's just like some sort of beautiful dream. Yo, oh Lord. I have no idea what I'm looking for today. Hey, they have the Smaug Stout. Smaug Stout. <clears throat> uh, no idea, no idea what I'm looking for today. I might get this again. I hate getting the same thing again, but that Lost Abbey was good. It's 18 bucks here. That is, uh, that is pricey. I don't know if you guys have ever had Modern Times. This is the shit. That is the shit. Oh God. What do I buy? Fubaka from uh, Plumes told me to buy some of that Dale's. Uh, seasonals, no, let's go, let's go over to uh, Belgians, just because that's... Is there such a thing as too much selection? Never. Never? Never, she says. It's not possible. It's, not, it's simply not possible. not possible. I think, okay, I think I agree with you, actually. That's right. That's, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I have to get this. This is definitely a thing. One is Stefana? Yeah. That's going in the cart. I don't have a cart. I don't even have a basket. I need a basket. That's a thing. I, I disagree. I think there's too much, there's a, such a thing as too much selection now. Gluten-free beer? Oh, God. What the fuck is wrong with people? Okay. Last one I'm gonna get is, uh, may or may not appear in a blog. Uh, <clears throat> Samuel Smith, the Yorkshire Stingo. Very excited about that. Uh, it's probably the most expensive Samuel Smith beer I've ever seen. Usually their stuff's like four or five dollars. This one's fifteen dollars. So, ooh, it's just one I haven't had. Um, I'll be interested to taste it. And anyone else? Yes, that is. I've seen a lot of people posting uh, that banana bread beer on Facebook and around uh, Instagram and stuff. It's good stuff for sure. Uh, I'm tempted to get a bottle of it. I want to look and see if they have anything cold. Eh. Eh, Chimay, but we've seen Chimay. Belching Beaver, but we've seen Belching Beaver. Well, they have a cold Black Marlin. I might, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put this back and get the cold one. And this one, Cali Creamin. That is a, that is a boss beer. That is a really good beer. That's a regular, like I have six packs of that in my fridge. It's something I just drink. I saw that they had the Iron Maiden Trooper beer. I'm tempted to just get a bottle just because it's Iron Maiden. I can't imagine it being like amazing. Why not? Because because Iron Maiden. That's why. That's why I'm buying it. Because Iron Maiden. Ooh, there's just so much stuff. Oh, Modern Times. Oh, Modern Times is good. Oh, Modern Times is really, really good. Rogue. See, Rogue, look, here's the thing. I like a Rogue beer. I feel like most of their stuff is really overrated. That's my opinion. I'm not a big fan of the Rogue uh, Brewery. I apologize if you if that's like your favorite thing of all time. All right, uh, let's wrap this up. I'm gonna go pay and uh, let's we'll get let's get back to the vlog here. 
all right guys well I'm I made I may have made an impulse purchase on my way uh, up to the cash register this was kind of in a different area this wasn't in the beer area they had like this little island which Bevmo does do they had like this little island set up and uh, they had uh, new uh, I forgot what the signage was but I was looking and I was like oh what do they have over here and I ended up buying uh, oh oh mm. uh, this is the Firestone Walker 2014 anniversary ale Huh. This bottle was twenty-five dollars. Um, so you know, beer budget hands. Um, if I'm not spending my money on vape stuff, I'm spending it on beer. So that's just a thing uh, that happens. Um, yeah. So this is uh, so the the Firestone Anniversary Ales are different every year, and they're blends of other beer it's like a beer cocktail made with other beers in a bottle if that makes any sense so they blend some of their other barrel aged bears like i think in years past they used it was like uh you know 20 percent double dba 70 percent sticky monkey you know they mix their beers into one sort of uh super beer that sort of represents them as a as a company um, I'm very excited about this. I don't know if it's going to be in the vlog this week, but it is going to come up in the vlog. Uh, it is going to come up in a vlog very, very soon. Um, as for what beer is going to be this week, uh, I'm honestly not sure. You will have to keep watching and, uh, and, and be surprised at whatever bottle I pull out. Um, overall, I feel like this was a successful journey. I got uh, the Firestone, I got the Wine and Stefaner, I got the uh, the Ballast Point, I got the uh, the Samuel Smith, and I got the uh, well, I got the Trooper again because Iron Maiden. Um, so I'm really excited. This was a very successful beer shopping trip. It was about 70 bucks for all this beer, which uh, you know. It, I'm a beer guy, so I have no problem spending money on uh, on things that I enjoy in life. So that's it. Now we'll uh, now we'll get back to the vlog. Yeah, so that was good times over there at the uh, over there at the Bevmo. They just their selection is ridiculous, and like the lady I talked to in the aisle, she just said there's no such thing as too much selection, which uh, I'm inclined to agree. So which beer? Which beer did I pick? For the vlog, well, I got home, I got, I put them all in the fridge, I didn't have any ideas about which one I was going to choose, I felt them all, and the one that felt the coldest, yes, was the Wine and Stefano, and I was really excited about this, because I've tried other beers of theirs, I've tried the Wheat Beer, and I've tried the Vitus, in fact, I think I've talked about the Vitus in a blog before, in a vlog before, this is the, okay, I can't even, it's the Double Bock, I, I can't, it's a German beer, Wine and Stefano, Corbinion, 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 Corbinion. Maybe that's it. Uh, let's W E I H E N S Weinstefaner. There it is. Um, let's see. Oh, it's very highly rated. And see, I just like this brewery, and that's why I picked it up because I've tried the Vitus and I've tried their wheat beer, and it is. Uh, it is stellar. Those both of those beers are really good. This is a very very highly rated beer. It's rated at a 94 on Beer Advocate. I still don't know how to pronounce it. Corbignon, 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 Corbignon. It's the Doppelbach. It's from Wein and Uh It's German, and I don't know how to speak German nor pronunciate uh, German names or say pronunciate right. But uh, I'm gonna be pouring this into a uh, into a tulip style glass as per usual, right over my keyboard, which is really the only way to fly if you're gonna live live dangerously. Uh, it seems to be quite carbonated. Oh, Ruby Roo, this is gonna have quite the uh, quite the head on it there. Holy cow! Look at that head. Uh, it's a it's a dark beer. I wouldn't say it pours like motor oil because you can sort of see through it. A little bit. There's a little bit of uh, 
of translucency there. You can kind of see, see my window blinds through it right there. Big sort of taupe opaque head on there. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's give this a try. I don't know what it's supposed to taste like or anything like that, so we're just gonna dive right in. Cheers, here's to ya. It's very carbonated. Good lord, that is good. Uh, savory, that's the first thing that comes to my mind is savory. It's not a Belgian beer, but it kind of reminds me of like a Belgian quad. Belgian quads tend to get somewhat savory. Jesus, God in heaven, that is good. It's got a very like toffee, like caramely toffee sort of flavor. It's very, very clean on the finish. It's nice and carbonated. Oh. Oh, you are good. You are delicious. Um, like I said, I've tried the wheat beer and I love it. I've tried the Vitus and I love it. And now I've tried the Corbinon. Corbin, how do you think you pronounce that? K-O-R, Corbinion, Corbinion. I mean, that's the that's my English horrible, you know, can't pronounce a German word. Corbinion. Anyway, this is uh, this is truly delicious. Yeah, it's savory. It's light. The body on it is very, very light, even though it's very, very dark. The body, the way it feels in your mouth, is very, very light. It has a very, very clean finish. I get uh, caramely, toffee, sort of cedary flavor. Um, gosh, that's good savory oh that's good i'm oh my god i'm absolutely going to be buying that beer again and i know i talked and i on the video when i was shopping i said i hate buying the same beer over and over again because i like to buy new beers i like to try new things i have a very adventurous palate i'll eat new things i'll drink new things i will try new things and so when i go to uh you know when i go to a place like bevmo and i see my favorites i'm like oh I could spend $10 on a bottle of beer that I know is good that I've already had, or I could let it ride, spend $10, $15, $20 on another bottle of beer, pardon me, that I have never tried, and maybe it's good, maybe it's not, thankfully. Holy crap, this is, uh, this is truly delicious. If you have the ability to get this beer, get it. Just get it. Don't even think twice about it. Mm. Mm hmm. But I did pick up some very cool beers while I was there. I'm excited about that. Uh, I'm excited, really excited about that Samuel Smith one that I got. Uh, obviously, yes, I'm very excited about the Firestone 2014 anniversary ale. Holy crap! I'm excited about that. That's 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 not the most expensive bottle of beer I've ever bought, but it was 25 bucks. That is half <laughs> half the price of the most expensive bottle of beer I ever bought, and. Uh, you know what I mean? In life, you have budget hands, whether those are vape budget hands or beer budget hands. And I just, uh, I probably spent all of my month's beer budget hands today, which is, uh, it feels good. And I have a delicious beer. I'm ready to sit down and vlog. I'm ready to do some first impressions. I'm ready to do some shout outs. Um, let's do some shout outs. Um, I do want to give a shout out to obviously Chelsea uh, from Society of Vape. Local Vape, uh, Omboy OC from Anarchist. Uh, God, I just met so many people. Who's the guy that runs Lighthouse? He's fucking cool. There's so many fucking cool people. Uh, Erica, everybody at Local Vape. They're just they're just spectacular. And you know, we just had the SoCal Vape Expo this weekend, and that's basically where I was hanging out. I did get to walk around a little bit. I met some very very cool people. Um, got to see the high voltage guys again. You know, I get to see, you know, people again. And, and that's what I like doing. And for the most part, I was hanging out uh, at the local vape uh, area. They had a big sort of couch that was very, very comfortable to sit on. Um, so, yes, obviously, shout outs to everybody and the organizers of the SoCal Vape Expo. It was just a fantastic, fantastic show. I do want to give a shout out. Uh, I'm going to have to open up my email here to do this. But there is an email related shout out that I would that I would like to do. Um, 
Before we get to that email related shout out, uh, I wanna give a shout out to some of my Facebook friends. Um, they uh, they helped me with my website. So what, what was happening is you would go to my website, grimgreen.com. I'm not sure if I've mentioned it ever before. If you headed over to grimgreen.com, let's just head over there because I know it's still working great. Uh, that there, there was like these this missing HTML code that would just pop up at the top. It just was it was just said figure margin and then it had some some brackets on there and I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to get rid of it. It was driving me insane. I'm not amazing with HTML. Um, I know some stuff, but I'm not great with it. And I couldn't for the life of me figure it out. So I just screen captured it. I put it on my Facebook and I said, look. Does anybody have any idea what's going on here with my HTML? It's all messed up. And there were a bunch of people that jumped on it uh, who helped me out. I want to give some shout outs to Mark, Gareth, Kyle, Zach, HD Joshua, Derek, and Charles. Uh, between them and myself, I was able to go in there, edit my HTML, and now my website is, uh, well, my website's back and working flawlessly. There's no weird HTML things or anything like that. And uh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been, it's been something that has been sticking in my craw like crazy. Just, you know, I, I'm very uh, particular about the way things look. Everything from Grim Green, everything from Namber Juice, everything from Epiclouds, and everything you'll see from the Grim Cult line is all, I do all the graphics and branding for it because I'm very, very particular about the way things look. I like things to be a certain way, have a certain feel, and look very well put together. And I'm not a professional graphics guy, I just know what I like. And so, Every time it was like an eyesore going over to grimgreen.com and seeing this HTML code because I, I keep thinking that's not the way I want my website to look. That looks terrible, it looks janky and bush league and I need it to be gone. And so I owe you guys a huge, huge thank you. Mark, Gareth, Kyle, Zach, HD Joshua, Derek and Charles. You guys really helped me out uh, a lot. And you know, there's a lot of really helpful people out there. Uh, you know, on my on my Facebook and on on the YouTubes and just, I like meeting really great people. Um, and speaking of really great people, uh, I met a fella at the SoCal Vape Expo. I told him I would give him a shout out. Um, his name is William. I just thought I would let you know that I was excitedly fi finally excited to finally meet you in person. I wish that I could have made it there for the second day, but I just ran out of funds. I know that you get a lot of shout out requests. Uh, I just thought that I would ask for one for my mom, Kathy. She and myself uh, quit smoking after 43 years. I only quit after six years, but I was smoking more than one and a half packs a day. Absolutely. Uh, William, it was very nice to meet you. One of the things that's truly great about uh, about this community is making friends, uh, uh, meeting and meeting people that you look up to. Um, I finally get to meet Vaping with Twisted 420 at, uh, at Vapor Slam in Winston-Salem, North Carolina this week. In fact, possibly as early as tomorrow or Thursday. I mean, today is Thursday. It's actually not Thursday. It's Wednesday right now. As early as Thursday, I could be shaking hands with Vaping with Twisted 420, and that makes me so, so happy. I uh, I get a little fanboy, and then I get to meet Cheeksy, and then I know I'm going to get a little bit of fanboy as well. But these things happen. You get to meet cool people. So, William, absolutely. Shout out to you. Shout out to your mom. Congratulations on getting away from tobacco. Um, there's nothing uh, There's nothing more satisfying. It was an honor to meet you, and uh, keep up... Uh, Keep up the good work. Additionally, uh, I do want to give a shout out real quick uh, to to Cheeksy Vapes uh, as well as Abby uh, Abby Vapes. People, 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 people. Uh, don't just. Here's the thing. I'm not coming down on you, Cheeksy, and I'm not coming down on you either, Abby. But there's people who do vapes in all of their in all of their names. It's like uh, you're like, oh, uh, my name's. My name's Jeff uh, Barrett, and uh, on Instagram, I'm Jeff Barrett Vapes. It's just funny. funny. It's funny to me that people put vapes after everything because I can categorically say that I have never done that. Grim Green, Namber Juice, Epic Clouds, Grim Cult, Grim Army, none of that 
has it's not grim army vapes it's not grim green vapes it's not uh namber juice vapes it's not anything it's not tugboat vapes it's not uh it's just funny it's just funny because you want to associate with vaping but uh i just think that's funny i'm not, i'm sorry that was a tangent i should not have gone on but both cheeksy and abby it was started by cheeksy they did these like sing-along music videos where they just played music and they vaped and then they lip-synced to the words and it's ah it's fun and cute when a girl does it um i listen to a lot of sort of like evil death metal black metal stuff and i tried to do it and mine came out a little bit darker so i don't think i'm going to be uploading that whole video to youtube but uh I want to give a shout out to them for uh, for being brave and doing the lip sync vaping thing on YouTube. I just uh, I don't have any songs that I would really do that to, and plus it's just slightly cringy and awkward to see a guy doing it rather than a girl doing it. When a girl doing it, it's fun, it's cute, and you watch and you go, oh, she's singing and having so much fun, and girls can get away with that. And me, as a man, as a boy, uh, I don't I don't think I could get away with singing along to Clutch uh, while vaping and lip syncing to Clutch. So, <laughs> shout out to you guys for that. Um, 13, I don't know how long we're into this video, but I know right now it's time for some first impressions. <laughs> Holy crap, that beer is good. So, let's do some first impressions, shall we? Uh, I don't want to blow my whole load here because I did get a bunch of stuff at the SoCal Vape Expo. Additionally, there was a pretty couple pretty heavy vape mail days in there. Um, I need to learn how to regulate my uh, vape stuff coming in and out. Um, I'll get, you know, I, I have a, a queue. The way that I, okay, the way that I do my reviews is... Everything is first come, first serve, and I have a list. It's just a Word file on my computer, and I do the next three, and then I erase those, and I do the next three, and then those get erased, and when things come in, they get added to the bottom. So it's like this never-ending list of things. And sometimes when the list will be getting low, then I'm like, oh, well, I, I kind of need some more stuff for reviews. Uh, and someone will say, hey, do you want this? And normally when I would say, uh, well, I might have to pass on that, I'll say, Sure, you know what, send it along, I'll add it to the review. That puts me out till, you know, May or whatever. But I always forget about vape meets, and vape meets happen, and I end up coming home with uh, juice and devices, and then more stuff comes in the mail, and then more juice and more devices, and I know this is the biggest fucking first world vape problem ever, but I do have a lot of stuff, and I want to kind of spread it out over the next couple first impressions. I've got a couple things here that I want to talk about. And I was hanging out at the SoCal Vape Expo with Chelsea, and uh, I'm just we're just vaping and talking, and she's like, "Dude, have you tried the Anarchist wires?" And I'm like, "Bro, no, I haven't." And she's like, "Dude, you really need to try the Anarchist wires." And I'm like, "Ugh, do I?" I get really skeptical of new wires. The G Plat thing, I was kind of like, "Uh, G Plat, yeah, I it's softer and." I like vaping with it, but I can buy Canthal for cheap. Or there's what Royal Wire now and uh, Hot Wires, which I don't like. Hot Wires. If you're a Hot Wires fan, I'm I'm not a fan of Hot Wires. So she's like, no, you know what? So she rebuilt my Petri, my uh, Dot Mod Petri Atomizer with some anarchist wire, some 24 gauge anarchist wire, and loaded it up with some juice, and she's like, here, try this. And I vaped it, and I was like, wow. <laughs> so this is anarchist wire, huh? Tell me some more. And she's like, well, no, here, just meet uh, Omboy OC. He's the one who makes the anarchist wire. And anarchist wire, he hooked me up with a couple pouches of it. It comes in this like guitar string type bag. Anarchist competition wire. I was a skeptic walking into this. I'm like, wire, how much, how much can wire really change the way that you vape? And turns out that it is a lot. Um, I've done a couple builds with this now. Uh, it's in my Petri, it's in this atomizer that we're gonna talk about later, and it's in this atomizer that we're gonna talk about later. The flavor has been fantastic, the performance has been stellar. It seems to have 
in my experience, a very fast ramp up time and a very fast cool down time, which is really weird. Um, it's very, very soft to work with, and I'm trying to pick I'm trying to pick his brain and see what is this wire. Oh, shut up, Siri. What is this wire made of? What's so special about it? I don't need another fucking G-plat drama. Oh, there's manganese in it. What is it? And so he tells me that it's a niachrome nickel blend. That's all that's in it is niachrome and nickel. And it's the highest grade nickel that is publicly available. So it's niachrome 80 and a very, very high grade the highest grade of nickel in it. And I don't know how that translates into, into vaping or how that translates into heat production or vapor production, but I do know that I have, have really, really enjoyed it. Um, let me have a toot on this right now. Um, I'll show you a picture of this build. Uh, we're gonna talk about this next. This is the flare, but I'll show you a picture of the, di I, of, I, of the build I did on this. And what I did is I used 26 gauge anarchist wire and I did about seven wraps of on uh, with a parallel build. Um, so it came out very, very wide with a lot of surface area. Um, came out to uh, 0.14 ohms. So quite low, the anarchist is a bit lower. Um, in fact, just the other day, I was building a dual coil with the anarchist wire with 24 gauge and I did seven wraps, right? And it came out to 0 0.19 ohms. And I was like, oh, okay, well, if I had been using Canthal and I did six wraps, it would have come out to about the same thing. So it ohms lower. So if I did six wraps of Anarchist, it's gonna ohm lower than if I did six wraps of Canthal, if that makes sense. So the idea is you can do more wraps, get more surface area, but still keep your ohms low. Um, the flavor is uh, the flavor is really really good. This atomizer has a shit ton of airflow and a giant wide bore tip on there, and so generally this would I get a feeling that I've never built it with Canthal, so I can't say for sure, but I get a feeling that this might be a little bit lacking in flavor. That anarchist wire really brings out the flavor. And I'm not just saying this as a hype thing. I'm not, I gain nothing from this. I don't care if you buy Canthal, Anarchist, G Plat, Royal, Hot Wires, whatever you want to buy. Personally, I have tried G Plat, Canthal, Hot Wires, Royal Wire, and Anarchist, and I've found the best flavor on this anarchist wire, hands down. just very very nice I will say that this blue raspberry juice does not pair in any capacity with this beer but what are you gonna do so feel free to look into it you know what I mean pick a wire that's that's right for you uh, I'm gonna link in the description to the local vape site where you could pick up some anarchist wire um, it's pricier. You get uh, so you get 15 feet for 22 bucks, and I've probably used I don't know three feet of this already. 15 feet for 22 bucks. How much is that per foot? Can anybody do the math in their head? Uh, so it would be 22 divided by 15. So that's a buck 46 per. foot. Foot. Uh, and you can get Canthal for a hundred feet for ten bucks. So think about that for a second. The Anarchist wire is uh, I've enjoyed using it. Obviously, I'm gonna put it through its paces. I'm gonna do all sorts of builds. I'm gonna do builds comparing it with Canthal. I'm gonna build uh, on the same atomizer, one with Canthal, one with um, anarchist wire, I'm going to use the same juice, I'm going to use the same cotton, I'm going to use the same mod, and I'm going to compare them to see if there really, if there really is uh, any difference. Um, you know, I, I'm skeptical of new wires and stuff like this, and so, so far the anarchist has been good. 
I don't want to give it a complete yes, fuck yeah, thumbs up just yet because I do have to spend a lot more time with it. But so far, so far, Chelsea, you were right. The anarchist is uh, the anarchist is pretty nice. Um, now to onto this atomizer. So this atomizer is called the Flare RDA. This comes from VapeNaked.com. Uh, let me go to their site. I'll post a link in the description as well to the Flare RDA by. 2JNT. This is an $89 atomizer. So this is not a budget style atomizer, but it is an interesting atomizer. It has it has two posts as opposed to three posts. One's positive and one's negative. So you kind of kind of like that dot mod atomizer. You build in between these two posts on the outside. So you can build a dual coil on there, you could build a quad coil on there, you can do vertical coils on there, you can kind of do most anything you want. Um, it does come with this excessively large drip tip, which I'm not gonna be able to get off. Maybe there's no reason to do that. But it's a uh, it's a three-piece atomizer, atomizer design, meaning, oh good God, no, nope, that drip tip is never coming out of there ever. There's your adjustable airflow. You have a deck with the airflow on the side. And then you have the or you have a base with the airflow on the side and then you have then you have the deck. And the deck they say the deck is made out of solid silver. I'm sorry. I'm going to adjust my cotton here real fast. They say the deck is made out of solid silver. Uh, that is somewhat Wow, that uh, vape naked, dear vape naked, dear vape naked dot com. Put a bigger O ring on the bottom cap because this is not cutting it. Uh, it just sort of uh, goes on and off very, very easily. It doesn't. Uh, the O ring barely. I mean, I if I have it on here and I just touch it, it just. It just comes off so, so easily. Bigger O-ring, multiple O-rings, that might actually help this out quite a bit. Quite a bit. Please do that. Uh, they have a limited amount. 22 millimeter rebuildable dripping atomizer made of 306 stainless steel. Unlimited airflow options. Adjustable ring, uh, multiple coil configurations, including a single coil style setup, three millimeter stainless steel Allen contact screws, massive copper stain slash stainless steel positive post, um, large dual four millimeter juice wells, adjustable Cylon style airflow, superior heat resistant peak insulators, um, comes with a flare wide board drip tip serialized. So it says, uh, with a focus on single and dual coil builds, the flare sets a standard like nothing before it. Built with a stainless steel body, deck, and top cap, the flare stomps the competition. You certify why? Why is? Where did I get silver from? Where did I get silver from? He said the base was silver. He said the base was made of silver. Was that in an email? He, I, I'm quite sure he said the base was made of, uh, I'm quite sure he said the base was made of silver. Digging the atomizer, there he is. Uh, vape naked. Yeah, the silver flare. Oh, so there's the flare and then there's the silver flare, full competition. Oh, okay, the silver flare offers the same specifications as the original flare with one incredible difference, the base is pure silver made from 92.6 percent solid silver so the base on this atomizer this is the silver flare not the flare but the silver flare is made from solid silver 92.6 percent solid silver that is crazy uh that is crazy anyway um I've been getting along with it uh, pretty well. One thing I do really like about it is the adjustable airflow. I do like the super wide bore drip tip. I don't like that the O-ring on the uh, on the base is so, so weak. It needs a thicker O-ring or something, multiple O-rings. Um, it's just very, very weak and slidey and it falls off all the time. Ooh. 
but it's nice. The airflow is nice and the flavor is really nice. But I think I'm I think that flavor is due to the anarchist wire. Anyway, it's been good. It's been performing really good. I do have to move on to other first impressions. The next one's going to be a two for one, and then I might have one after that as well. So this, pick this up at the SoCal Vape Expo. This is called the Gripper, which I feel like there's a couple of mods out there called the Gripper. Um, this is an AR handle, meaning that if this pink part wasn't here, you could bolt this onto an AR rifle and uh, use it. So, needless to say, it's very, very comfortable. And it has a red button, so you don't, nobody thinks it's a gun. It's got a red button, and it's a mech mod. It carries an 18650 in the inside. You pop open the base, like this. MXJO 18650 on the inside, and he didn't give me all the exact specs. But it, there is a special like a heat sink material in there where your battery sits. So you put the positive side in where you would put, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, a clip. And you shut this down and you press the button and it vapes. And I've been holding it like this. I put my thumb up against the back, I hold the grips with my fingers, and I use the trigger. It's full mech, uh, and it has a very, very low voltage drop. I was using uh, uh, a 0.17. I was using that uh, flare on here for a really long time. In fact, I was using the dot mod atomizer on here for a very long time as well, and it held up well. It held up really well. Um, Obviously, I'm going to report back later with how this performs in the real world. It's kind of, I don't know if it's a novelty, but it's certainly not, it's strange. This could be like a vape meat, <laughs> a vape meat mod. Um, I want to take this to North Carolina, but I'm very, very nervous about trying to get this through TSA and put it on an airplane because it looks so much like a handle. I guess it could be an RC car handle, but... I honestly just don't really even want to risk it. I'm just going to I'm just going to use it at home for now. Like I said, obviously I'll report back. It's very very durable. I mean, it's an AR handle, so it's it's very very durable. And one thing that I do like is you can set it down and it stands up like on your desk. You can set it down, I'm balancing it now, but you can set it down and it'll stand up like this on your desk. And so you can just grab it and vape it, um, which I think is fantastic. Right now I have it topped with the new Magnus tank and Basil Ray was right. It's not Magnus, it's Mag Anus. <laughs> can you read that? Is it just me or does that say Mag Anus? Am I wrong? That says Mag Anus. Mag Anus. Magnus. No, that says Mag Anus. Um, so I'm here with the Mag Anus, which is uh, another bottom coil sub ohm clearomizer, 3.5 mil, huge airflow, 0.2 ohm coils. Another another entry. So what the, the 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 trick to this atomizer, this tank, is they say it can hold up to very, very high wattages. I've just been rocking it on a mech mod because I like the way it performs. I just like the way it performs on a mech mod. I've turned it up to 70 watts and it's been really, really nice. It didn't get dry and it was just a very warm, intense, flavorful vape. Obviously, this is another tank. Yes, I'm going to put through its paces. And there was someone on Instagram. I would like to try to find them, please. Um, I'm going to try to find this. I'm going to try to find this guy on Instagram because he said something that was hilarious to me. I posted a picture of this on Instagram. And what was his name? Uh, DJ CHSTR. 
DJ Shitster. <laughs> he said the tanks looks like the tank looks like it has a hot topic belt on. And I just thought that was so fucking hilarious because you look at it and you go, yeah, that tank looks like it has a hot topic belt on. Again, I'm gonna report back with how this uh, with how this tank and this mod work out for me in the real world, in real life, in my day-to-day -day vaping. If it's something that's enjoyable or not enjoyable, obviously I will report back in how and see how it goes. So far it's been good. I will say that so far it has been good. And uh, yes, I can set it down on my desk and it stays. It stays there. So the last first impression I have to do is something that I was very, very, I don't know, skeptical about. I'm losing sunlight. Hold on, let me adjust my lighting. Let me open this up a bit. Let's open this pit up. How's that? Is that better? Keep, there's these clouds that keep going by and I keep losing my lighting. So I'm just going to type this into, uh, into Google real fast. It's C A S. T I G A D O R uh, mod noop. Oh, yes, Emperor Vapist. Uh, I am going to put oh, a link in the description. All it is is a picture. <laughs> uh, all it is is a picture. Um, all it is is a picture. So what this is, is fantasticalness in a box. Do you see this little box here? Do you see this little box here? Do you see this little button here? Atomizer. Gratuitous vaping. So this is a dual 18650 mech mod. And when I say mech mod, I mean mech mod. There's no wires, there's no MOSFET in here. It is a mechanical switch right here. It's just a little squishy flat switch. If I take this atomizer off, you can see the, uh, see dual O-rings, man, that's a thing. This is built with 24 gauge anarchist wire. It's just a uh, six wrap dual coil. The performance on it is ridiculous. And this EVE atomizer that they sell from Emperor Vapist is very, very much like the Aeolus. The airflow comes in the top right here on the side, top on the side. The flavor is spectacular. The performance is just, uh, is just silly. I've kind of been having a slight love affair. Oh, come on off the smoke alarm really how did that happen anyway yeah that was a smoke alarm rest in peace headphone users so yeah this has been uh, this has just been silly there's this little brass switch on the bottom there and you pop it open your batteries go in the little tubes up to the contacts right there. There's springs on the bottom. Obviously, you put them in positive side up. You push this in. It just sits in there. It's this tiniest little thing. It's This essentially is doing the same function as this. This is essentially doing the same function as this. Crazy. That is crazy. It is small. I don't know the price on this. Um, let's go. Let's try to find their page. All they have is uh, all they have is their Twitter and their Facebook. Oh, there's only a thousand made. That's a fucking shame, man. You guys need to make a bazillion of these. And they're only through resellers in Europe. Oh my God! Why bother? Look, that sucks because this is so fucking cool. Everybody should be able to buy one. 
I think that's kind of stupid that it's a 1,000 thing only. And you sent one to me. This is one that someone else could have had. Todd got one. Twisted got one. I'll post a link in the description to their Facebook page. You can email them, uh, emperorvapeast at uh, gmail.com to see if you can get one. These are fantastic. I don't know the price. If these are over 200 bucks, uh, I would be like, uh, that's a lot. Under 200 bucks, 140, 150, 160, maybe 170, but chances are you're not going to get that. It's a... It's a, uh, let's see the price conversion because they may have it on their site. <sighs> oh, God. Oh, my God. $226. $226. Why is it so expensive? <sighs> so it's a parallel dual 18650 box mod it's only 25 millimeters by 50 millimeters by 78 millimeters it's very very small easy to handle ergonomically designed it's all cnc machined it has very low engraving low voltage drop silver plated contacts external screws are not exposed innovative hinge battery cover 100 percent original dyed design serialized limited to a thousand pieces you guys need to make way more than a thousand of these um because I think a lot more people should have these. If uh, And I hate to say it, but if someone clones this and can do it as well, good God, this thing is amazing. The power that I get from this, the battery life that I get from this, it's just, uh, it's just silly. And this tiny of a little palmable package. I'm scared of my smoke alarm now. It's crazy, okay? It is crazy. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna put this through its paces, and I'm gonna be very, very hard on this mod because it's stupid that it's limited. It's stupid that it's so expensive. But God damn it, it just works, looks, and feels so freaking nice. It's kind of unbelievable. It's kind of crazy. Um, over two hundred dollars for this mod. Over two hundred dollars. So let's wrap that up. Let's wrap up the first impressions. Um, because we went beer shopping, I'm not going to be able to do any. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do any music, but uh, I'm going to have the music back next week. I'm thinking about taking my GoPro to Winston Salem with me and shooting a vlog there at the meet. Does that seem like a good idea? Um, just setting this on a table. We could talk about beer, we could talk about vaping, first impressions, I can do some shout outs. Maybe we can have Twisted on, maybe we could have Matt on, maybe we could have the Plumes guys on. That might be really fun and I, I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna bring my GoPro. Um, but what I wanna wrap this up with is retro vaping. All right, really quickly, let's do some freaking retro vaping to wrap this vlog up. What I have is one of the first mech mods that uh, kind of ever existed. Um, it was Alt Smoke's first mech mod, that's for sure. And I did a video a long time ago on this device. I did a, a video a long time ago on this device versus the Silver Bullet, which I'm surprised I haven't grabbed out the Silver Bullet yet. For some reason, I don't feel like the Silver Bullet is retro, even though it is retro. This right here is the Omega. So this came out, I want to say, 2000, late 2010, maybe very, very early 2011. No, I think it was late 2010. They're still selling them, the Omega version 1.1, on the Alt Smoke site. Um, that The one on the site is actually an upgraded version from the one that I have. The ones they have on the site now don't have these hex screws going around it that you need to unscrew to take apart the top cap. It's just one solid piece. Mine is old school and has these hex screws. So what this was, or is currently, is a mech mod. So let me grab a battery. I'm gonna grab a sub-ohm cell. And there is a spring in here. I wonder if that spring's gonna melt if I try to rock a sub-ohm on here. Let's try it. Let's try it. F it, I'm feeling dangerous. 
Um, so the way that this worked was it was a plunger, right? That's how you activated it. It was kind of like that old copper mod. And what happened is there was this Delrin cap here and there was a pin that came down. Make sure that everybody's seeing this. There was a pin that came down and touched your battery. So I'm gonna put a battery in here. Just, it was a classy mod. It just felt like a classy mod. And I'm gonna try to put an atomizer on here. Ugh. Let's try to put this dot mod on here. And if this works, then I will be pumped. It fires. Oh, it's firing. It's firing. I need juice. I need juice. Yes. Shout out to Poor House as well. Him, uh, he was uh, such a very, very cool guy. And I ran over my shoelace. Let's put some juice in here. Ooh, we're going to vape some sub ohms on the uh, Omega, which I'm very sure people have done before. But keep in mind that when this Omega came out, Sub-ohm didn't exist. Rebuildable atomizers did not exist. Uh, we had low-resistance 510 atomizers, low-resistance 510 cardomizers, and additionally, in this mod, we stacked batteries. That's right. We would buy two RCR123A 3-volt batteries, and we would stack them to get 6 volts. That is quite the voltage drop on there, Omega. I honestly can't believe this is working. This is fantastic. Um, this was an old school mech mod, man. You know what I mean? We went through this phase where everything was wired and we all realized that wiring can fail. And so what we did is we all wanted mech mods because it's just contacts touching. There's no wires that can fail or no circuitry that can fail in there. So everybody wanted mech mods. So, you know, Pure Smoker came out with the Prodigy V3, which was a mech mod. This was a mech mod. Uh, shortly thereafter, uh, they came out with the uh, Megalodon, which was a mech mod. People were just going mech mod crazy. Um, and this was before sub-ohms. And then when we started getting regulated mods again, like the DNA 10, the DNA 12, the DNA 20, and we were using these cardamizer tanks, uh, Everybody wanted regulated again. <laughs> Everybody wanted regulated again. You wanted a cardamizer tank on a Provary. That was like the king. And then the sub oming came around, and now mech mods are back, and everybody's mech modding. And now people are taking that sub oming into regulated, and they're vaping, you know, 0 0.3 ohm coils on their Segeli 150 watt. So everything. It just keeps coming around. But this. This was one of the first ones. I remember posting pictures of this on Twitter when I was in Pleasanton, California with a cardamizer on it and I was dripping uh, honeybees. I was dripping Digital Sig's honeybees juice on this with a 3 ohm cardamizer and uh, stacked RCR123A batteries so I could vape at 6 volts. Okay, well, it's awkward, okay? Sub ohming, sub ohming on the on, on the Omega. And they did have a mini version of this called the Alpha that I believe uses a four, 14500 battery. I don't remember. Uh, I do have some 14500 batteries on the way because the only way I'm going to be continued to doing any retro vaping is with a 14500 batteries because there were so many 14500 battery mods, so many 14500 battery box mods. But uh, but yeah, we'll wrap this up with a quick little retro vaping segment here on the Alt Smoke Omega. I'll post a link in the description if you wanted to uh, see more about it. I'll try to track down my original review as well as the Omega versus the Silver Bullet review from back in the day, back in early 2011. But that's what I got, everybody. Obviously, I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling uh, coming up, um, going all over the place, going to uh, uh, the ECC that's happening in Niagara Falls, the VPX convention, um, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I'm going to be there. Uh, Vapor Dynasty Expo, I'm going to be there. There's VaporCon West in Reno, Nevada. There is Vape Bash in Chicago. 
I'm very, very excited. And, uh, you know, I'm sticking in there with the format, even though I keep straying from it. Uh, as you'll see next week, uh, RBA Tuesday is not RBA Tuesday. Um, Mechmon Monday is still Mechmon Monday, but RBA Tuesday, I realized that, uh, shit, <laughs> I did not do an RBA on RBA Tuesday. I did something like an RBA, but I guess you're just going to have to wait and find out what it was. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much for the continued support. It's just been uh, it's just been fantastic and overwhelming. And like I said, there's a fuck ton of new products as far as mech mods, atomizers. Uh, you know, we're gonna be talking about batteries and battery chargers, hybrids, uh, regulated, unregulated, crazy, the crazy world that we call vaping. But that's what I got for today. Thank you so much for watching. What am I gonna grab? Of course. It's going to be this. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, let's keep on vaping.